So last night around 2 a.m., uh, NVIDIA released the newest version of their StyleGAN models. Um, they actually put out the paper for this in like June. So it's been about three or four months of us sort of knowing what we would expect uh, of this repo and not really having it. Um, I kind of guess that they released that paper a little early because there were a couple other folks doing very similar things in the GAN world. And I think they wanted to make sure that like they were also, it was clear to everyone that they were also on it. Um, <laughs> since that time, actually, like uh, the, there's been a community effort to sort of take what was in that paper and apply it to StyleGAN 2. Um, I guess God, probably a month or two ago, I actually already recorded a video on a demo of how to use that. Um, and so this video won't really be a demo because honestly, I've had less than 24 hours to even play with this thing. Um, and more of just like walking through sort of what they talk about or you know, their approach to things. There's also a bunch of new updates to this model um, that I think are worth talking about. So I would imagine you probably won't get a demo from me for another week or two, um, but I can quickly talk about just sort of what I'm seeing here. Um, so as mentioned, um, there was already a paper released in June um, that sort of described what they were trying to accomplish with this new model. Um, and the big thing is basically like, this is uh, to work with much smaller data sets. Um, I forget exactly what the t full title of um, their paper was, but it was essentially like, you know, working with limited data. Yeah, here you go. Training generative adversarial networks with limited data. The idea here is that, you know, they've trained mostly on FFHQ and predix ex examples, and um, that is a 70,000 image data set, and it's doubled because they do mirroring. Um, so it's 140,000 images, which, uh, as many of you know from having worked with this, that is not a feasible uh, data set for most of us um, and for more, most use cases. So this like experiment was really about like, okay, how do we do this with less data? Um, and they built the MetFaces data set to make this possible. So um, they pulled a bunch of portrait paintings from um, the Met and were able to make a data set from it, which I think ended up being around, if I want to, I think it was like something like 1300 images. So much more on the scale of what like you or I as hobbyists would be able to generate. Um, so then they went through a bunch of training examples and test cases to generate a new version um, of StyleGAN 2 that works much better uh, with data sets of that size. And so you'll hear that like this is now being labeled as StyleGAN 2-ADA. ADA stands for Adaptive Discriminator Augmentation. So um, this is really about data augmentation. Um, and aug data augmentation is a very, very common technique or things that we discuss, not just within StyleGAN, but like almost all um, image-based machine learning models. Um, you know, there's a very like strong uh, use of augmentation um, especially in discriminator networks. So um, if you've done yellow v5 or any sort of um, class-based you know, discriminator, uh, you will often see a lot of augmentation systems, whether it's uh, rotation, cropping, ablation, um, crazy colors, that sort of thing. So that's essentially what they're applying here. Now the trick here, and if you've tried this with just training your own model, is that um, the big challenge is that if you augment uh, data on input, um, that augmentation becomes uh, a part of the output, right? So let's say that I flip all my images upside down. If they're human faces, um, doing that in your data set that you train on, uh, what ends up happening is it actually, uh, the outputs then include those flips. Um, so the challenge here for, the, for NVIDIA and for other folks who have been working in this area is what sort of augmentation can you do that can apply to the discriminator, but not what they call leak into the outputs. Um, and what they've come up with is a pretty like uh, interesting and also somewhat technically difficult uh, challenge of basically like, um, you know, generating augmentations between the reals and the fakes when you are applying the discriminator, but that doesn't leak into the generator output. Um, and they've got, the, I would recommend reading the paper because there's a whole bunch of information on how they go about doing this. Um, the idea here is that whatever you are applying to the augmentation can be reversed in, in a function. Um, but that essentially what it does, it keeps the discriminator sort of like guessing uh, a lot longer into the augmentation or into the sort of the training step for the generator. Um, a very common problem that you'll run into with most GANs is that uh, the discriminator ends up basically sort of overfitting or memorizing the, da the data, which can then hurt genera generating um, images from the generator. So this whole process is basically like with lower, and that is especially true of um, much smaller data sets. And so basically the challenge here is, you know, how do we get the generator from not overfitting um, so that it can learn more? And then also like, 
essentially this augmentation is also how do we generate more data from a smaller data set. Um, and you can sort of see here that one of the things they're doing is they're doing rotations, they're doing color changes, they're doing other uh, translations and other techniques. And the paper goes into much more uh, detail there. Um, it also talks about how Cypher 10, which is a pretty big data set, but has like, I think there's something like a thousand classes inside Cypher 10, basically means that each class is a smaller um, example of uh, a, a limited data training set. So really interesting stuff, lots of things here to look at. Um, I recommend reading the paper because it will explain a little bit more. There's also another uh, paper by Zhao et al. Um, that I will also try to link to in our video notes just so you can read that and sort of get a better sense of it. But essentially the idea here is like this is great for us's community and a lot of the artists that, talk, that I talk to, which is like I can only get a thousand images. What do I do? So this whole network should work better. Um, again, there's already a community version that I would recommend sort of trying and starting there um, before you jump to this one. Uh, a bunch of other new things that they mention here in the uh, in the repo. Um, so first off, ADA is the, the big, the most important thing. Um, they also say they have uh, support for mixed precision. Mixed precision is sort of a complicated topic, but essentially uh, if you feed less or smaller bits of data with lo less float numbers, um, it should train faster. Uh, the Skyfly Nil and Peter Bailey's repos already has um, support for FP16, and it works a little bit differently than it does in this repo. Um, and to be quite honest, I haven't found the 1.6 times faster training um, in those networks, so I'm interested to sort of see if this actually holds true in uh, this repo. Um, one thing I have heard from a lot of folks is that mixed precision is probably faster or even better if you're on multiple GPUs, which a lot of us are not because that gets really expensive. Um, so I haven't really played with this enough. I, I can't say like, this is totally true and look how great it is. Um, but yes, that it is something that they say they support, which would be great. Um, and I'm hoping to compare it to uh, what is already available in the community uh, repos available as well. Um, automatic hyper parameter so selection. Um, gonna be honest I'm not as like hap like this is fine one of the things that this is kind of overselling is it's not like it actually does um, hyperparameter search um, and actually like returns the best uh, search results it's just sort of like a bunch of configurations that you can pick from um, and that makes it easier slash better for a lot of things um, but I wouldn't say it's like a it's not a, a silver bullet um, it's helpful and w this is one of the big challenges with this repo is it's very, very different from the previous two style again repos. So it can just take a lot of, uh, it's going to take a lot of people sort of like digging through the source code to understand what's going on here. The automatic hyperparameter se selection is almost like um, style again two had a concept of configs, which have actually kind of gone away in this, I believe. Um, but essentially it's a new, it's a new set of configurations. So it's, um, you know, FFHQ level configurations versus Met Faces configurations versus 256 by 256 configurations, those sort of things. It's helpful, but I wouldn't say it's um, it's as great as this sounds. Uh, let's, let's see what else here they have. Uh, clean code base, um, extensive refactoring and simplification. The code should be generally easier to work with. Um, maybe eventually, but I actually have to say that this is almost the opposite of what I've experienced. Um, in particular, like the training, uh, the train.py is no shorter than it was previously. And in fact, they've sort of renamed all the variables. So it's actually going to take you a lot longer to, if you're used to using StyleGAN2, um, it is going to take you a lot longer to get set up and running your first test. So while this may be true that it is refactored and simpler in the long term, um, in the short term, there's going to be a lot of headaches and people are going to be uh, kind of like hitting their head against the wall to try to make work, make sense of this. Um, I haven't dug into the source code m too much more, but I will say that for folks who have tried to dig into the TensorFlow code here, it is very, very complicated. And I don't really think there's that much of a difference in this one, um, other than it's now different in a different way, which is just as annoying. Um, if you've ever written the PyTorch or you've ever used the uh, Rosenality um, PyTorch style GAN2 model, you know that like that the code there is much easier to read than the TensorFlow version is. So I'm not sold on this. I think it's like helpful that they did refactor and simplify some things. Um, but I actually think it's more of a headache than it could be. Maybe it's better for the long term, but for the short term, maybe not. Um, there are a bunch of these other things that I think are like helpful and I'll probably demo these more in the future. Um, one thing that is nice is this ADA, this augmentation pipeline um, is actually sort of self-contained. So you could actually move it to another product project really, we hope fairly easily. Um, but I think it's still going to require a lot of like effort and work. Um, 
biggest frustration with this network or with this new repo, as always, is that um, there's a note in here somewhere toward the bottom, which is basically like, we're not going to take pull requests. Um, this is a one-time code drop from their perspective. Yep, um, one-time code drop. So here again, we're going to end up forking this thing and having a bunch of uh, community versions of this yet again. Um, and I mean, honestly, I can't blame like NVIDIA. They're not software developers. They're not trying to turn this into like a uh, project, but it's endlessly frustrating that this thing just like sits here and like, you know, something's broken and like, you can't fix it yourself. Um, they did actually open the issues this time, which is nice because previously there were no issues available on these repos. Um, so let's see what the first issue is here. One moment. Uh, okay. I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, you know, the endless struggle of getting NVIDIA stuff to work, uh, and trying to fix bugs will still happen. And I fully expect in the next month or two to have like a Skyfly nil or Peter Bailey style fork of this that will be adding a bunch of new features, right? Because um, for those of you who have played with those uh, networks, they're much easier to use or they have more fully fledged features. And people who are like hobbyists have found ways to hack or like add additional features that make them better for hobbyists. So for example, the create from images data set tool um, library uh, if you know, um, if you've used the Create from Raw images um, that's available in the Skyfly Nil or uh, Peter Bailey fork, um, you know that this will, this will is going to create like a very, very large data set of like 20 gigabytes, 30 gigabytes of files, which sucks. Um, it's just not, it's really annoying, especially if you're using Colab, that sort of thing. Um, so they don't support any of the Create from Raw. Uh, I assume the first hack will probably be someone putting that in here. Um, but today, like you got to, generate a raw data set which means for me like i've been spending a year doing create from raw um i can't get up and running on this like in five minutes it's going to take me an hour or two to get everything set up again so um this will not be a easy shift over online i mean style again one to style again two was actually fairly easy this will be a much harder shift um the api for this has completely changed um i will say for the better in the long run but like uh in the short term it has not um so you might remember that there was a thing called data dir and then a thing called data and you had to combine those two and it was kind of confusing um, now they've just moved to a single argument called data which is i will uh, agree is better but if you're used to using data dir and data and it's like it's getting very confusing um, results is no longer results it is now called out dir um, again they just changed the entire api and i'm sure that's like for the long run going to be better but it's just going to be a headache for a lot of things going forward so i would say the overall um thing here is like this is awesome i'm really excited to dig into this um but also it's gonna take everyone a lot longer to get set up so you know two steps forward one step back is is sort of the truth about this repo and i think um we'll sort of see how it goes and how people sort of work with it um but i think there's going to be some challenges and it's going to be a slow shift over to this new sort of format um it is still written in tensorflow it's still written in tensorflow 1.15 which i know a lot of TensorFlow 2 people are really annoyed about, like all these sort of things. So um, I'm interested to sort of see what happens here. Um, I will definitely be playing with this. I will do a demo in the next couple weeks, but I also am teaching a StyleGAN training class starting on Sunday. Um, and we won't be able to use this because I literally have no idea how it works. Um, so we'll still be using the Peter Bailey's fork for that class. So um, I would say, you know, there are some people out there who are already digging into this. Um, I saw some folks already doing training runs last night. So I'll sort of keep an eye on this and see how it goes. But um, you know, excited that NVIDIA is staying like relevant with this stuff. I mean, it seems like once a year they do this big code drop of a new model, um, and it gets better and better and it's perfectly like, oh, that's awesome. That's like the point of this. Um, but it will be a little bit frustrating for the community who have invested a lot of time into the sort of previous API and we'll have to make some changes. So we'll see how it goes. Um, but I definitely recommend that people dig into this and maybe start playing with it. I will probably try to have a collab up in like the next week or so. Um, that if you want to mess with it and start playing with it and see how it goes. Um, but in the meantime, if you do get to play with it and you find, hey, Derek, you're full of shit and like the F, the mixed precision actually works really, really well in here, um, I will gladly eat crow and be happy to see that it is an improvement. So um, take a look at it. If you do get to play with it, let me know how it goes. Uh, and as always, you can drop questions or comments um, either on the YouTube video or in the Slack channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.